good morning, or perhaps good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you are tuning in, and welcome to this Ash Wednesday service of the First Presbyterian Church of Tuscaloosa. So glad that you could be with us today. Just a few service notes for our service. There is a bulletin available for this service. It was in the email that was sent out by the church or can be found on the church website. We recognize that some might be able to safely come down to the church today. And for those of you who wish, there will be an Ash Wednesday station set up outside, just outside the chapel. And you may come down to the church today and receive the imposition of ashes and receive communion to go. Come between the hours of 11.30 and 1.30, or again, 4.30 to 5.30, and a minister will receive you there. If those times do not work for you and you can still come to the church at another time, just come in and park and call into the church office, and a minister would be happy to come outside and meet you and to give you those gifts. You are also invited, if you wish, oh, excuse me, if you are not able to come to the church today, then you are invited at this time to go ahead and gather bread and juice or wine for the communion portion of our service. You are also invited, if you wish, uh, to get some ashes from the fireplace, perhaps, or you may even get a little dirt from the yard or from the garden, remembering that the liturgical offering words that are offered during the imposition of ashes are, from dust you were made and to dust you shall return. So you are welcome to gather some ashes or a little dust or dirt from around the house. And you can rub those on your forehead or even perhaps on the back of your hand during that portion of the service. Don't forget that Lenten devotional materials are available for adults, youth, and children. Check the church email for those. Friends, let us worship God. I invite all who are able to please stand and join me in the responsive call to worship. For 40 days and nights, the rain fell and the waters covered the face of the earth. Lead us, O Lord, from death to life. Moses spent 40 days on the mountain learning the commandments of God. Lead us, O Lord, from death to life. Elijah traveled 40 days in the wilderness to hear the voice of God in the silence. Lead us, O Lord, from death to life. Jonah cried out to the people of Nineveh, Repent, or in forty days you will perish. Lead us, O Lord, from death to life. Jesus fasted and prayed for forty days and was tested by the devil. Lead us, O Lord, from death to life. God sent Christ into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Let, Let us walk, walk through, through this momentary, momentary darkness, darkness into, into the, the glorious, glorious light of everlasting, everlasting life. life. Let us pray. Almighty God, you despise nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who trust in you. We confess that we have been a rebellious people. We have broken your covenant, and we have tolerated injustice in our land. We have not shared our food with the hungry. We have not sheltered the homeless. And we have not aided our neighbors in need. We quarrel and fight among ourselves. Create in us new and contrite hearts that truly repenting of our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, we may receive from you 
the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness. Hear now our repenting hearts. Amen. If we remove the pointing of fingers, the speaking of evil, if we offer food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of those in want, then our light shall rise in the darkness and our gloom shall be like noonday. In the name of Jesus Christ, know that we are forgiven and rejoice. Thanks be to God. Since God has forgiven us, we should also forgive one another, sharing the sign of peace. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, friends. Peace be with you. Peace, friends. Peace be with you. Friends, before we hear God's word read and proclaimed, let us first turn to God in prayer. Merciful God, your word is our way of truth and life. Create, create in us hearts that are clean and put your Holy Spirit within us so that we may receive your grace and declare your praise forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. Our scripture lesson for today comes from the 51st Psalm. Let us listen to the word of the Lord. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You, you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. 
Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore, restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Friends in Christ, Every year at the time of the Christian Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration and to, to renew our life in the Paschal mystery. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. With those words from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church, we begin our Lenten journey each year on Ash Wednesday. These words are called an invitation to the observance of the Lenten discipline. Every, every year we hear these words, but this year feels different. We know we need repentance and forgiveness and mercy, we know we have not been at our best. We've fallen into bad habits. We've given in to fear. We know we need to face our sin and ask for forgiveness and do better. But we are simply exhausted. We are emotionally spent. Many of us are feeling spiritually parched. We are starving for something more. If you are watching this service and feeling that way, I am so glad that you joined us today. And it is indeed so fitting that we would gather in spirit at the Lord's table today. For truly what we need is sustenance and strength for the journey ahead. We need reminders of God's love and grace and mercy we need renewal. We need healing. We need hope. We need Jesus. So it is truly fitting that we would begin our journey today at his table. The Book of Common Worship continues this Lenten invitation this way. We begin our journey to Easter with the sign of ashes. This ancient sign speaks of the frailty and uncertainty of human life and marks the penitence of this community. Never before have we been given such constant reminders of the frailty and uncertainty of human life as we have this last year. Quite frankly, we don't need any ashes to be reminded. But still we join in this ancient tradition as a reminder that we are a part of a community of faith connected with others across the world who somehow in some creative way today will be also marked with ashes. But we are also a part of a community of believers across the ages who in frail, fearful, uncertain times have put their hope in the Lord Jesus Christ his life, 
death, and resurrection, and who look to God to be their refuge and their strength. Though we might not be physically together today, I am grateful that we are together in spirit and that we are together with so many other believers this day. Finally, the Book of Common Worship concludes the Lenten invitation this way. I invite you, therefore, in the name of Christ, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and penitence, by prayer and fasting, by works of love, and by reading and meditating on the Word of God. Lent, with its emphasis on penitence and self-examination and fasting and contemplation, doesn't always sound like a happy or pleasant experience, so we might be reticent to join in. But we need to keep a couple of things in mind. One, given all we've been through, we need to be reading and meditating on God's Word and renewing our relationship with God because we need God, and we need to be reminded of God's love and grace and protection now more than ever. But also we need to remember that the Lenten journey, difficult though it may be, leads to Easter. Just as so many other roads to glory run through shadowy valleys, the journey through Lent leads us to joy unparalleled, to life eternal. And news like that is just what the doctor ordered. Dr. Fauci himself could not top that. So let us together accept the invitation to observe the Lenten discipline and let us together observe a holy Lent. Will you please join me now in a moment of quiet reflection? What shall I render to my God for all his mercies store? I'll take the gifts he hath bestowed and humbly ask for more. The sacred cup of saving grace I will with thanks receive. Fast to thee. 
praise him, ye saints, the God of love, who hath thy sins forgiven, till gathered to the church above, we sing the songs of Friends, hear the word, gracious words of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give our thanks and, and praise. It is truly right in our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe. You are our God and we are the creatures of your hand. You made us from the dust of the earth breathed into us the breath of life and set us in your world to love and serve you. When we rejected your love and ignored your wisdom, you did not reject us. You loved us still and called us to turn again to, your, to you in obedience and love. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the heavenly choirs and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Out of your great love for the world, you sent Jesus among us to set us free from the tyranny of evil. He lived as one of us, sharing our joys and sorrows. By his dying and rising, he releases us from bondage to sin and frees us from the dominion of death. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these, your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. May these ashes be for us a sign of our mortality and penitence, for it is only by your gracious gift that we are giving everlasting life. By your spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, Send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Lead us, O God, by the power of your spirit to live as the Lord requires, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you, our God. Keep our eyes fixed on Jesus Christ until this mortal life is ended and all that is earthly returns to dust. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection, when, with the redeemed of all ages, we will feast with you at your table in glory. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When Jesus was at the table with his disciples, he took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took and poured the cup. Saying, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. When you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And now, whenever you gather at the table, know that we celebrate Christ's death and resurrection until he comes again. At this time, if you have bread and juice, you may now partake of it, saying the body and blood of Christ given for you. If you are imposing ashes, you may say, remember that you are born of dust, and to dust you shall return. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. dust, and to dust you shall return. Michael, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Let us pray. God of grace, we give thanks for the holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. You have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us the faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go but only that your hand is leading us and your love is supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God, the Father who does not despise the broken spirit, give you a contrite heart.
May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal you by his wounds. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us in all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. Go in that peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon and remain with you and those you love both this day and forevermore. Amen.